Okay, here we go, and we're live. So, we're here with Nina. I have no idea how to say your last name. <laughs> how do you <laughs> Just say pretend it? It's, pretend it's two O's, like Butrago. Butrago, there it is. Okay, so I shouldn't have to introduce, but been in BMX forever, and actually you used to live in Ohio, didn't you? I did. I did some time there. <laughs> yeah, I saw a picture somebody posted the other day of you doing a double peg on that rail downtown in a dk oh, yeah. shirt i was like <laughs> yeah. whoa yeah going back that was like on my lunch break like at some point i was working downtown and um brian kaczynski came to town and i don't remember if it was like a detour or something but there was people riding and i was like man i want to ride and then we went there and Kaczynski got me to do that rail. I was, this is on my list forever and I never did it till that day. So wow, it's yeah, pretty that, cool. That one's on my list currently. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so we're here to talk about the women and X Games. Uh, I know this is a very fast introduction since we just got on here, but if you want to tell anyone who might not know who you are, that would be cool first, I guess. 30 second uh -huh. elevator speech. Holy crap. Okay, ready to go. Um, all right, my name's Nina. Uh, I started riding BMX when I was like 19. My car died. I was pretty bad at skateboarding. I had some friends who rode BMX, and then I got into it. Uh, once I picked it up, it was like, all right, what's next? And I kept learning stuff, and then fast forward past a lot of things. Um, yeah, I'm still riding. Um, there, when I first started, compared to when I first started, there wasn't many girls riding, and I've worked really hard ever since I got into BMX to try to help grow the amount of women that are getting into riding, and um, just kept an open mind and made tons of friends all over the world, and now the women's scene is doing awesome. We have a lot of opportunities and contests. Um, I kept pushing for it, and yeah, now there's like a whole younger generation that just, they have so much to look forward to. It's great it's legitimately exploding yeah yeah like it's, it's insane <laughs> i know i don't want to miss any of it but then i forget like oh yeah like i mean i'm always still gonna ride as long as i can but i think my life off the bike needs a chill from myself going to all these contests i just never want to miss a beat because there's like always like a world's first or it's just so cool like the women are like doing stuff and not telling people what they're up to and then they just like boom like throw down like a double whip or like, oh yeah what you know some crazy combo that you you know for women is awesome you know like no one's ever seen that go down before so yeah it's like that that like gotta be there gotta gotta stay gotta go to it can't miss it <laughs> yeah i'm like their biggest fan so you know like for me i mean i maybe don't want to be sending it as hard i mean i do they get me pumped like once i'm in the moment i'm like oh hell no she just threw that all right what am i gonna do <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? right but um, it's so it's so much fun. There's so much good energy, and um, yeah, women's BMX today is like, I I just I mean I always dreamt they could get to where it is right now, but it really already exceeded like what I thought. That and where it's I like it could go. not even close to being where it's going to be either. Oh yeah, like it's still really young. Like it's early in the stages of it having as much support as it has as it has now, which is like just still growing. So it's pretty cool to just i don't know try to forecast and guess where it could go absolutely so so when it comes to the x game stuff like were you involved at the very beginning of it um i guess you could say that yeah for the women i mean, I mean. yeah so well most definitely i think i kind of like just try to have a presence there every year like the first year i ever went to x games is like 2003 um i this lady who had a nonprofit for skateboarding was like, yo, we want to have, we're going to have some BMX bikes there and it'd be really cool. We're trying to encourage women to get, you know, get into bikes. Like, would you want to come out and like coach a clinic at X games? I was like, hell yeah. So everyone that goes to X games has a chance to like try skateboarding or BMX. And they were really trying to interest uh, young women to get into it. Right. So, um, I went back every year and volunteered and then I'd bring more girls with me or I'd see new faces and um, I, we even at some point uh, got, a de actually the following year I, I haggled uh, Jay Muron and was like, yo, <laughs> let us get on that course over there, you know, because like, we were only allowed to ride the interactive park that like the public could ride, but we yeah. wanted to get on the course. Yeah. And um, I don't know, 
if it if it was him or how it happened but we ended up getting like to ride the course and the following year and it was so cool that I don't know if this is before your time, but Fuel TV, it was like a TV channel. Yeah, I know they, the channel, but I like never had it. <laughs> it, it. It like came and went. I know, me neither. I would just like see it at sports bars and stuff. But yeah. um, anyway, they came and they filmed it and they did like a cool little special on it. It was rad. And then, I don't know, just nothing really came after that. And so like with X Games Official, like it was always really vague, like who the contact was. And then, I don't know, I just kept partnering with all these nonprofits to try to help grow BMX, you know, not just yeah. women, but just people in the crowd. And then, so it got to the point where I started, we started a petition. We're like, well, we don't really know how else to get a hold of X Games, so we'll try that. Yeah. So every year we'd bring this petition and like people would sign it. We even got like Matt Hoffman to sign it a bunch. And then, um, I don't know, it was fun. It was cool, like an annual trip to X Games to try to like put in some work and get more people into BMX. But I want to say it wasn't until X Games came to, was, or they were coming to Austin when they finally left LA that I was like, man, at that point, I, living in Austin for a couple years, I realized that I know most of the people who are involved with like building the dirt jumps or building the ramps. And I was like, you guys got to know someone, like, who can I talk to? So they were like, well, Matt Hoffman's our sport organizer. So I started bugging him. And then he was able to get us, like, get the relationship started with x games and um every year i just kept pushing for like a little more opportunity you know like first year was just like uh could i could invite three other women so there's four of us yeah we got to ride during a practice a, a men's street practice um which was really weird because we're like dude those guys are like competing for a lot of money like we don't want to get in their way but we just, it'd be cool to ride the course as long as they're not in the way so you guys so, were on the course at the exact same time yeah whoa yeah. yeah i mean it was like probably their second day of practice and they had like a two hour long practice so we were like well if it's not too weird for them like we'll stay out of the way as best we can and just like yeah. go try to dive bombs and rails and ledges and see what's up you know and so it was i think it was me angie uh paris benegas and danny winhausen so the, we you know, we did our best. We got on and off of there. We had to, like, bring our own cameras and kind of, like, have our friends hiding in the corner trying to take pictures. They're real weird about that. But anyway, the next year, I was able to get two more girls invited and get us on the park course because, like, yo, the street course is cool, but I think there's more women riding park. Like, we could try that. So it, this is – I could give you the whole evolution of how it went. But, yes, to answer your question, <laughs> um, every year I push for a little more and – Fast forward to Minneapolis, it just seems like after a couple years of demos, we were just getting stuck in demo land, you know? So. Yeah. So what year, so you'd say, it was it 04 that you ended up getting to ride? Because you said it was like the year after you went for the first time. Like you got to oh. sneak on the ride, like the public thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if that like X Games, like since I started getting involved, like directly working with them, if they will count that. But Anyway, the most recent happenings, I guess, since Austin, I guess I thought the three years in Austin that they were here were considered demos, mm -hmm. but they were actually, like, the guy corrected me. He was like, no, those were just practice sessions. I was like, oh, okay. Weird. But, Either way. Like, like, we didn't know how to describe what our purpose was there because everyone's like, oh, sick, when do you guys ride? We're like, oh, we already did. Like, we rode on a practice day. And they're like, what? Like, what, you don't have, like, an official event. So it was always kind of a weird thing to, like, when you hang out with people or see them at X Games. And they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, well, we got to ride the course. Yeah. Which is awesome. You yeah. Know, only a few people in the world get to ride that course. So, like, you know, not sounding ungrateful or anything. But no matter what, it's cool. But it's still, like, at this point, it's, like, not enough. Kind of. Yeah. It feels like not enough, I guess you could say. Not trying it's just, yeah, like where it evolved was like basically I handed them what could be a contest. All it was missing was prize money and medals. Yeah. Like, I mean, we had an announcer. They were filming us like we were on the Jumbotron. It wasn't broadcasted like anywhere outside of the stadium. Um, but it was, you know, like a 15-minute jam session demo. Like everyone got two sick runs. And then like at the buzzer, um, I think one of the girls like, 
she wanted to throw a flare all weekend and she just nailed it like at the like as we were wrapping it up yeah. for the camera so that was cool and then yeah like i was like all right well that was every year like all the riding gets better and better and um you know women come from all over like I mean, I try to invite the top women, so that means, like, I would love to have an international roster. So girls were coming out in their own time from, like, Germany, Japan, New Zealand, uh, South America. Like, it, yeah. Putting in the work. Like, making it happen. Due to text games, you know? Like, I think everyone in the world's heard about it, you know? And it's, like, such an honor to get to be a part of it. And so, like, everyone was pumped. They're like, all right, this is it. We're going to just bring the best of the best, and we're going to just, like, try to make it happen for next year and we're not the ones that get to decide that so i guess in the end it just kind of i don't know with so many other events and cool uh contests going on and like the olympics like so many women don't really want to that you have to pick and choose what events you're going to go to or that you're going to throw it on the line for and i don't think anyone's really at the point where they're willing to do that for another demo for x games unfortunately right I totally agree with that and like I guess okay so I know you did like the interview questions with our BMX I saw that and then there's a few other places where you see things going around is there anything that hasn't been talked about or asked (laughs) because I feel like we don't I mean we could keep repeating the exact same stuff that everyone's already heard and said and it Uh, gets kind of nowhere yeah I mean Honestly, I think it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I feel like most of what the other interviews were all kind of like bashing X Games. The one thing that I, part of the story that like really wasn't depicted because like, you know, everyone's got an agenda. They're like, what the hell X Games? Yeah. You know, um, was that I, I, I feel like I need to give them some credit for trying to keep us there. Like, well, yeah. like have some sort of presence at all even though they knew they couldn't give us a um you know a category to compete they i thought that that was cool that they still like made some room for us to still be involved you know so i was really trying to keep the relationship going but i don't it just was like one of those things where the girls are like dude they're just not gonna give us a class like we're not coming out anymore (laughs) yeah right definitely you know so it's like kind of forcing me to let go and like walk away from the relationship so then in the end like i feel like oh gosh like anyone who works in pr at x games is probably like those ungrateful bitches you know like well and and that's kind of like what it feels like a lot of people are acting like but i feel like it's completely like it's not like you're saying give us a contest or we're never coming back it's saying we're if like if we're not if it's not worth it we're not going to like put our time and energy into this when we could put it into something else. And a lot of people I see are acting like, like you guys are acting like entitled to it. And it's totally not that at all. It's, yeah. It's, that's what I mean. Like it's it just how the, the picture it paints and like how some people, if you're just skimming through glint, like I just think it's a shame that at today's day and age, like that we would even feel remotely bad about speaking up for like, or just telling people what's going on right you know what i mean like that's that's just like the hard part about some of these interviews is like not all of the questions are asked you know and it's figuring out what's the right ones that are like not gonna completely get us blacklisted from x games absolutely and that's kind of why i wanted to do this because i feel like you can't hit everything in a short interview and it's kind of hard to talk about all of it so this is kind of what we're here for (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, I mean, it was always a good time, not going to lie. Like, we always, like, we're pumped to go see the other sports and everyone, you know, all the other women's categories. Uh, it was just, it, we learned a lot every time we went. We're like, huh, okay, well, it's cool that they have a category. But it's interesting that they're not broadcasting it and then the women are bringing their own media and, you know, like, just little things like that. Yeah, and um, I guess we're kind of in a place, too, in BMX where it's, a lot of contests i mean i probably might be wrong about this but i feel like there's some contests anyway that do equal pay for both the women and the men Mm -hmm. so so x games might also be looking at it like okay we either have to do it all or not do it at all because we don't want to like give them like if we might look bad if we just offer them like half the money or just a medal 
And yeah, and that's that kind was of a concern a, on their part too. Like that, they were like, "Well, look, you know, we can, we had a, a couple of situations with like the women's skateboarding. Um, you know, they had it where." the women's prize purse wasn't equal and then they organized themselves the women they started like the women's skateboard alliance and lobbied for equal pay and yeah. unfortunately it kind of turned around on them because in order for them to afford equal pay in just one of the categories they had vert park and street they ended up going down to just street oh so they were like yeah. well if you like yeah we could do that and but it's just going to cost you these other two like events right which is tough because like in skateboarding you do have a decent amount of women that do each of those disciplines you know where like in bmx we mostly have park riders but um well anyway i think it's just interesting that since then they had a policy espn where if they add any other female categories it has to be equal pay because I kept asking, like, every year, like, okay, well, thanks for still working with us, but why not? Like, why? Yeah. What's the holdup? Is it money? Like, could we help raise the money? Maybe you guys could find, like, a more female-friendly sponsor. Like, what about Dove? <laughs> so Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, right. Like, they're all about women and, like, the, the different shapes, sizes. Like, you know, just your BMX woman could be the face of your, <laughs> your products. I don't know. Yeah. Just, like, trying to, like get the just get some answers get some suggestions not just like give a hard time you know like always trying to come up with solutions and try to work with them but it's a pretty big shift to steer you know i guess they have so much going on with like the scheduling all the parameters of like each sport like what goes into it the medics and i don't know it's just it's huge it's a gigantic thing like it, it really is. And I'm know? not trying to bring up all of the points to be like, oh, X Games isn't that bad. I'm just like also trying to give both sides of it. And another point that I thought of too is like, they used to try some really dumb stuff with X Games. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey. I didn't even know what sky surfing was until we were talking about this the other night. And I was like, they tried that in X Games? Yeah. Like, I mean, what? that's what I was like, what? I mean, that's pretty off the wall, but that was kind of like what the exciting part about X Games was, is that they were kind of like the place for the sports that wouldn't make the Olympics to yeah. have a platform, you know, yeah. a series to compete in, and a way to showcase stuff that, like, no one really ever gets to see unless you're into it, you know? Right, and someone said, bungee jumping, what the heck? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like really? And I brought, I made the comment, like, okay, if they can do all this stupid stuff and try all of these things, why not try women's BMX for just one year? Like, just, yeah, like, just try it. Give us a chance. Like, I mean, we, like... We thought, oh, maybe it's the numbers, so we broke it down, made like a media package, like for everyone's like reach on social media, like individual and sponsor, and it just wasn't resonant. Like nothing, I just feel like nothing we say or try to do is gonna like what we say is not gonna affect their decision. It's just what yeah. It is. <laughs> so uh, it's just exhausting. It's you know like trying like, to change an old person's mind. Yeah, or trying to date someone who doesn't want to date you. Like they're just mm -hmm. like keep you there. They'll take you out to eat, but then they're like, nah, nah, nah. right. This is as far as it goes. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so in that whole like thing you just said about the media thing is that just goes to show you that you are all putting in the work to try and like prove that it it could be worth it, and not just like saying, hey, we're done with demos. Give us an event, or we're done. It's like the work's being put in it's being done the correct way it's it's definitely not what some people make it out to be yeah i mean but that's kind of the cool part about opening up conversations is that you get a lot of opinions and people coming forward with different ideas or like it or you see people's true colors that like you didn't think absolutely they had you're like what absolutely. all right burned you know and it's okay to like you don't agree with someone but Sometimes when you do get into a debate and you start talking about stuff and people can't back up the why behind stuff, it's mm -hmm. just like mind blowing. Oh, <laughs> I'm definitely. not one to really get into politics and stuff, but it's it's, <laughs> it's much it's much like that. Yeah, well, but, um, it's definitely not black and white. That's for sure. Uh oh, sorry. You're <laughs> like, all right. Uh, this is all freestyle. We're stuff propping that up. Okay. <laughs> we're not. We're not the news. 
cool. <laughs> um, so, so to someone who might be saying, like, there's a lot of people making the argument that it's they're trying to make money and like the the whole money side of things. Like, I I made the argument to that because they're saying like there might not be an audience for it. I made the counter argument that okay, how do they even know that? <laughs> this isn't that's something exactly that's existed it. before and and then y- you also have to think about how many countless people young girls out there who've never heard of freestyle bmx before might be into it because of something like this exactly that's like i when i started riding for dk like anytime there was a chance to go do shows sure who doesn't want to get paid to ride your bike but It was so awesome every time I got to go do a show with people because all the little girls in the crowd were like, oh, my God. You're right, right. You know, and I I think about, like, when I was younger and even just, like, watching the Olympics and seeing the gymnastics girls just, like, do something incredible. Like, I wanted to do that. Like, I just saw it on TV and I was like, oh, my God, that woman is awesome. Like, I want to be her when I grow up, you know, and, like, it's just a matter of, like, getting it out there, you know, and so that's kind of the tough part with with like the TV aspect, like they're like, oh, it's not our job to help you grow your sport. But like in a lot of ways, like whether they take ownership of that or not, like it does, you know, it really would help, I think, if we got on, you know. Wouldn't you think that they'd want to be like, yes, we helped do that? (laughs) Like. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I don't, there's not there's no harm in doing yeah. that that's why i'm like well i don't know it's just still like a lot of unanswered questions <laughs> the and the other thing that got brought up too that i thought of was like look at the influences that are out there for young girls right now you've got yeah. the the catch me outside girl that that little tay whatever she's not out <laughs> she's not in the limelight anymore but then that whoa vicky or whatever her name was like like that's what people are seeing. Can you imagine if some like five years from now, or even now, if X Games let girls in, and then uh, the Olympics did it, and then all of a sudden we have a girl version of Dave Mira, like a yeah. superstar, that household name girl BMX rider. How yeah. positive that would be for who knows how many people in general. Totally. That's what I'm hoping for, happens for someone like Hannah Roberts, you know, like USG is our USA number one, you know, yeah. like, from the Midwest. Like those are the dreams that like, you know, if I don't know, I just hope that that happens for someone that like in freestyle that like can help just grow everything. But in a good way, you know, like I think, you know, it's so crazy, like kind of going back to like the Olympics, like everyone, I remember when it first got announced, people were losing it. They were like, oh, it's going to ruin BMX. Yep. Like it's going to, you know, make it corporate. And, you know, and I'm like, dude, but it's, how is that? How does that really like affect the people in the woods digging? How does that affect the people riding street? Like it just makes people more aware of like the actual like existence of pmx if anything yep. and if they want to do it it's more accessible you know it doesn't really take away from everyone else's agendas like without you, it's a freestyle doubt. yeah you just do what you do and it's yeah and what was that comment i saw it it might have been on your post but it was someone saying how funny is it that some of the same people complaining about the uci and making things corporate and all of this stuff and some of the stuff they were saying about it was like playing out through the x games and it's like reversed (laughs) yeah i was like wow i didn't even think of that it's just crazy yeah it's it's oh no i'm on hold i think Uh, you pushed a button sorry someone (laughs) just tried calling it was i'm trying to put this on do not disturb hang on oh it's okay it's on now they're like why (laughs) are you saying that on this live stream quit it (laughs) that's funny but it's just another thought that came up. There have been a lot of things. So, like, okay, I guess a good question to ask is, is there anything that you've seen that you haven't had a chance? Oh, there one again. <laughs> Sorry, is there anything I've seen? <laughs> that, that you haven't had a chance to, like, maybe respond to in a long-form way like this, that, like, points that have been brought up or anything like that about it? Um, 
I don't think that there's been, I, I mean, I don't know. It's tough to say because, like, it's hard to ask the right questions to, like, get, like, something else I really want to say out of this. Yeah, I totally, I just thought, I wondered if there had anyone had, like, left a comment and you were like, oh, yeah, you really responded to it and wanted to, like. There were some comments that were just, like, people that I've never heard or seen, but, like, I just, they're just, like, random people on social media that just would make a comment and just be like, oh, the girls' level isn't where it needs to be. Like, yeah. done. Like, that's it. And I'm just like, okay, but that's your opinion. Like, have you watched any of the things happening at the latest contests? Like, Oh, yeah, it's very all? clear that those you know? people and aren't then, paying attention. Like, just, it just seemed, like, kind of uninformed. And maybe I'm a little biased in my own opinion just because I'm, like, a huge fan of the women's side. But I've also got to see how far it's come in a long, all my years, you know? And so yeah. I'm I think I'm definitely biased, but you know, like it just seemed like some people were just really quick to respond without any research or like consideration or like watching any of the coverage of the other, like other events. Yeah. And I think what we're getting is a case of the, uh, silent majority here, which we have an enormous silent majority in BMX where there's just like, there's the small group of people who always voice their opinions. And it's most of the time it's the negative people. Then you have those people who are usually the voice of reason who are responding to them. And I think the vast majority of people either don't care or are on like whatever the reasonable side of the argument is. Yeah, it's a lot of keyboard warriors too, mm -hmm. I've noticed. And not just their sport, but in general. I'm just oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, why is this so draining? Like I... I think Instagram could be kind of fun, you know, it's cool to see what people are up to, and then I, you know, did try to open up a conversation, but, like, it was just, like, boom, just, like, just throwing a whole bunch of, like, like, heavy opinions on the table, and I was like, damn, no love, it's okay, like, there's always going to be two sides to every story, but it just seems kind of shitty when it's, like, uninformed, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that's just more of, like, kind of what I wanted to do with this give put the information out there give whoever wants to watch it everything <laughs> and then you can form your opinion after you've heard like a lot of the different sides obviously we don't have whoever runs x games in here but it's still like we're giving them credit talking on each side of things and giving the benefit of the doubt to where it's like form your opinions based on actual facts not what you think you know yeah, that's always a tough one out there, you know, people just chime in. and But it's been, on the other hand, it's also been really cool to see other people just responding, like, yo, dude, like, what makes you say that? Mm -hmm. Like, bring up some examples, like, back up your comment. Yeah. And, like, when people can't, it's, you know, or when they can, or, you know, it's just interesting to see people go back and forth and just the passion and really just feel supported in some way like that this conversation was necessary you know absolutely and the fact that it's happening rather than just being thrown under the rug is pretty cool hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that almost feels like a good place to to end the conversation unless you have more that you want to say um, is there more to say i guess would be a better question well, I mean, if I could just read, like comment on the whole situation, if I've learned anything, you know, and like, after some of the reasonings, like I asked X Games, like what, are, what are, is there like any particular restricting factors? Like, is there one? Is it the money? Is it this? Is it that? Mm -hmm. You know, and like, and I try to make a lit my own list of all the things that would be a good reason for us to have a category to compete. Yeah. And one of them was like to grow the sport and when they were like, it's not a responsibility to grow the sport, it really like, just, it was like this weird weight of my shoulders, like, like off of my shoulders that I realized, oh my God, we don't really need X Games <laughs> in some ways, you know, like we've helped grow our side of the sport so much without them that like, we really don't need them, but it would be really cool if we could still be a part of it, you know? I think that's the one thing that maybe got overlooked and actually defined, like... It's totally I guess, true. Said out, said out loud pretty much. is like, well, you know, like, we started pretty underground, and we've all come together. We've started, you know, there's women doing clinics on how to ride. Like, there's 
jams out of the Caddy Woods. There's on an international scale now, like contests all over the place that host a category for women. It's it's awesome. Definitely. We, didn't, we did that without X Games. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? There's quite a few people in here that I think you might be excited about. I don't know their names, but I think you will. So Jamie Delaney. Oh, yeah. Kim. Mm-hmm. Flatland Kim that I don't know how to say her last name either. Uh, and then Taryn Hip said, thank you for everything you do for BMX, Nina. Oh, yeah. Everyone yeah. that's been talking is in full support of all of this everyone's so sweet yeah i mean taryn's real awesome she's the one behind um the women's weekend in the woods at caddy in pennsylvania and she does she's like a i don't know i feel like every girl is like the little organizer pioneer of their scene you know it's pretty cool um that we can all still across the miles just be just as pumped and support each other you know Oh, absolutely. Every t- every year when Women's Weekend comes around at Rays, I get excited because they're so much more excited about everyone else and riding <laughs> whenever <laughs> hanging out. It's like it's just like the best vibe because everyone's getting stoked for everyone else, doesn't matter what they're doing. And it's just a great time. Hell yeah. It's like just riding with a bunch of cheerleaders in some way because you always have a fan club <laughs> cheering you on. Like, there, and yeah, there's I nothing mean, wrong with that. That's no, It makes I it mean, more like, fun. They're, they're actually cheering you on. Like It's not just like, go team cheerleaders, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's so fun. Like I mean, it's like riding with a bunch of friends that maybe you never met, but they're just like longtime friends. So it's, it's cool. The women's scene is rad. I agree. Totally. Um. So maybe, maybe a good way to end this would be, so... The point that got brought up where someone was saying like that it kind of felt like the women were trying to shame X Games into giving them a contest. I feel like the good way to end this is to just talk about why that's not true because you're doing all of the homework and giving them examples. You did the media packet. Like maybe coming from you, I don't want to try and summarize it. Yeah. Um, so the whole point of bringing this up wasn't to shame X Games to give us a class. It was just to let people know what's going on. We've worked hard with them for several years, and it just got to a point where um, they're not ready to give us a medal event, but uh, and we have to walk away. So like, we have all these other amazing events to focus on in the meantime, and it was super fun all of our years at X Games. It just came down to timing, you know? Like, yeah. And I just think it's weird that in my own BMX lifetime, I never, when I first started riding, thought women's BMX would be in the Olympics and then that it would happen before we have a medal event at X Games. Like, that's just so weird to me. I it meant is. it as innocent as I say as I say it, you know? Um, but I like, you know, news is news and it gets thrown with a little oh, bit of absolutely. heat under it to throw in the word boycott and then it turns into this, you know... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What it is. And, and it's not... I. I think I might be able to explain a little bit about the Olympics things. I, if you're anything like me, we never thought Olymp- the BMX would ever be in the Olympics. So the and X Games has been around for a long time. So it was just like natural to think X Games is going to have women's class before the Olympics would even get BMX. Exactly. That's, and that's why it's, it's so weird. I'm like, does yeah. anyone else agree? that it, It's like almost disappointing. And that's kind of what I brought it up. And I wasn't... I guess maybe how you can read, you know, when you see things written down, it's a lot different than if you're actually just talking to someone. So oh, I yeah. can see how maybe the tone of that was like the internet vibe changed to fuck X Games when that wasn't like what I said at all. I was yeah. just like, it's just, hey, this is so strange. Is anyone else that's been riding as long as me feel like this? Because this is weird. Yeah, that's exactly. It's awesome, but it's like weird, you know. Like, right. Right. So I think a lot of people are on the side of all of you and hopefully this can help Uh, i'm not going to end the call but i'm going to end the stream so if there's anything else you want to say to anyone who might be watching send Uh, it (laughs) yeah i don't where can i guess we should do the uh that and then the outro can be where we can find you and anything about this okay um well 
I guess if I have to give a shout out to anyone, it's all the every, anyone who supports BMX in general. The, all the ones that have been super welcoming and cool, getting you know their little sister, their girlfriend, or any woman to get on a bike. Uh, you know, like thanks for that. Like I have so many more friends to ride with now, and so many more girls to like get stoked with, and um, you know, help spread the good word of BMX. So thanks for that, and. Um, Women's BMX has always been working really hard, a lot harder than some of the other disciplines out there. There's a lot of women doing their own blogs and zines, and um, one of them, like kind of the main central news source, is like re- regrouped. A bunch of the women are now working together, and it's called the Bloom BMX. Um, that's really cool. It's run by Angie Marino and uh, Beatrice Trang. Um, she used to do Magnolia, and then Angie and I used to do Yazine and. Well, it's just like a really cool, like one-stop shop to find out some of the coolest, latest things going on in women's BMX, and it's got an article about all the stuff we talked about as well. There it is. That's where you guys can find it. So thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna end the stream now, and uh, we'll see you next time, I guess. Cool. Thanks, Brent.